there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, it's all about the scroll saw blades. Skip tooth, reverse tooth, spiral, pinned ends, plain ends. What size? What do you choose? For what stock? For what material? Guys, it gets confusing and um, it's really not that hard but you just need a base point to start with as far as how to choose your blades and it all begins with knowing what each blade does, what it's capable of and what kind of limitations you can expect from that blade and that's what this show is about. It's all about giving you a base point to start with. So why don't we start with talking about the different types of blades that are available to use on your scroll saw. In my shop for the most part I use Olsen scroll saw blades and it's the only reason for that is basically availability. It's what's available in my area. Um, but the, the, the general principles that I'm talking about today and the general sizes um, are pretty much applicable to all scroll saw blade manufacturers. So you can take the information from this video and apply it to um, the manufacturer that you would be having available in your area and it should be pretty much the same across the board. Uh, it may not be exact as far as the TPI goes but it will be close and you should be able to get a generalization and move forward from there. So the first blade that we're going to talk about is the crown tooth and the crown tooth looks just like this and what it is, it's a scroll saw blade that has staggered teeth facing different directions, meaning that it will cut on the down and the upstroke of every single stroke, and it's quite an aggressive blade. Um, by aggressive, do I mean that it's going to tear your work to pieces? No, uh, I don't mean that, but it will. Um, cut much quicker than a normal scroll saw blade as it has that aggressive up and down cutting motion. So the crown tooth is one that you may consider and while I don't use it in my shop, um, just want to make you aware that it is out there. Another type of blade on the market is a spiral blade and uh, they look like this. And the spiral blade is kind of unique and um, the way they manufacture them is actually kind of cool as well. You might want to look that up. It's really neat what they do with it. But basically the blade after the teeth have been milled is twisted so that those teeth are all the way around on that blade. So you actually don't rotate your stock to cut what you do is move it in the direction that you want to cut whether it be forward back or left or right and because there are teeth on all sides uh, it will cut in whatever direction that you push it um, the thing that I found with spiral blades is if you want that nice crisp line that nice clean edge you won't get it with the spiral blade so don't think that you're gonna find the easy way out and not have to learn to spin your wood. You could just move it whichever way you want. You're not gonna get a crisp edge. These blades kind of nibble away at the edges. So spiral blade is yet another option. Another thing that I wanna point out about spiral blades is that the ends of them come in two different types. Uh, one would be a flat end and the other would be just a regular spiral end. And what that is, is when they're doing the twisting of the blade, um, in manufacturing, longer lengths are twisted and then just cut into blade lengths. So um, the ends that you put into the blade retainers are actually spiraled, they're part of the blade, and they can be a bit cumbersome to get into your saw. That takes a bit of learning to get used to. Personally, I don't like them. I prefer the flat end spirals, which have the same ends of the blade as a normal 
uh, type scroll saw blade and they're much easier to install. So be aware that there is two types out there, the spiraled ends and the flat end. Well then you've got the, the big controversy of the scrolling world of pinned blades versus the flat end blades. And of course it depends on what your machine is capable of. Um, in my experience, pin blades are usually larger and, you know, therefore more coarse work. And it's much more difficult, uh, in some cases it's near impossible, to do fine intricate work with a pinned blade. And the only purpose, or the only reason for that rather, is that in order to get that pin into the metal for the, the blade, uh, that blade has to have a physical girth in order to hold the pin. Um, if, if it isn't there, they can't install the pin in the blade. And because of that, the blades are usually uh, much bigger in size. Therefore, it limits what you can do with it. So, in general, when choosing your blades, if your uh, scroll saw does in fact have the ability to house a pinned blade, um, you may want to consider. Pin blades are generally for more uh, coarse work, um, and by coarse I mean, you know, sweeping curves and that sort of thing. The flat end blades, which you would be twisting in a blade retainer to hold it in place, those are generally for um, your finer fretwork and your finer details. And then you have the reverse tooth blade. And um, this is one that I touched on briefly with uh, my scrolling lessons quite a while back. But the reverse tooth blade, if you didn't see that episode, the majority of the teeth on the top end of the blade cut in the downward direction. And at the bottom of the blade, there's three quarters to an inch of teeth that point upward. And the purpose of that, of course, is that it does its majority of cutting on the downstroke. Um, but as you are maneuvering the wood, it brings those last few teeth up through to cut on the upstroke to help with the burring on the back end or the, the tear out, if you will, if you want to call it that. It does not eliminate it, but it does minimize it as opposed to uh, a different type of blade that only cuts on the downstroke. It cleans up that cut as it comes back up through the wood. Um, your crown tooth will also do the same thing. It will help to clean up the burrs on the bottom, but reverse tooth does have that capability and it's just another type of blade that's out there. And then of course you've got your skip tooth and your double tooth. And what these names refer to is the way that the teeth are oriented on the blade. And of course um, it doesn't really affect your cutting too much. Uh, one can be a little more aggressive than the other. It doesn't really matter. The important thing to note with these particular blades is the tooth orientation and that is they only cut on the downstroke uh, meaning that that tear out or the burring at the bottom or your underside of your work that uh, is is not eliminated but reduced with a reverse tooth or a crown tooth with a skip tooth blade or a double tooth uh, it is not reduced and uh, with some woods you can get quite a bit of burring on the bottom or the underside of your workpiece which of course means uh, more sanding etc etc if your piece is visible from both sides then of course maybe a skip tooth uh, may not be the blade for you to choose you may want to take that reverse tooth and use that so um, there's yet just another one. There's a million types of blades out there, guys, and I'm not gonna go through them all. I'm just giving you the, the more popular or the general ones. Now Olsen blades have um, a couple specialty types of blades that they make. Uh, I'm not sure if they're available by other manufacturers. I can't say for certain, 
but they have mock speed blades and PGT or pre uh, precision ground tooth and um, basically the mock blades are designed to cut quickly and uh, they do a fantastic job they're a great blade and the PGTs the, pre the precision ground tooth um, they cut quickly and aggressively um, but they leave a very clean, almost shiny edge uh, on your interior cuts and your exterior cuts. Uh, it's incredible how nice they cut. They are a little uh, more pricey than your regular blades, um, but the finish that they leave on the wood, depending on how important the piece is that you're cutting, uh, sometimes is worth that little expense. They're not over the top crazy priced, they are just a little more expensive than regular blades. So there's two other types to add uh, to your consideration being MACH and uh, that's M-A-C-H and uh, the PGT blades. Well there are actually more blades than that out there on the market and I'm not going to get into um, all of them I just wanted to make you aware of the types of blades that are available out there. Um, this show is more about your sizing of the blades for your stock, but of course how can you choose the blade you want unless you know what's available. Um, in my shop I mostly use the reverse tooth blades. Um, I'm also a fan of the PGT and the mock cutting blades and I also use flat end spirals. So those four blades will be the ones that I will be pretty much concentrating on for the rest of this show. Um, but again, the sizing principles that I will be talking about are applicable to all types of blades. It's not just these particular types. So if you're a skip tooth person or a crown tooth, the size of the blade that uh, I'm speaking of during the rest of the show is applicable to those blades as well. So now that you know the types that are out there, let's talk about the blade size and how it is that they come upon those blade sizes. So how are scroll saw blades sized? Um, they're sized by a universal numbering system for scroll saw blades and uh, they would be say a number two blade, a number three, a number five, a number seven, a number nine, a number twelve. Um, they all have this universal numbering system and in general with those sizes they have so many TPI. And what is TPI? Let me just step aside here. TPI is teeth per inch. And you can see up here, this actually is a number 12 Olsen blade. So the universal number would be 12. It is a reverse tooth, so it's a 12R. And generally, in this particular case, a number 12 blade is running at about nine teeth per inch. Olsen blades, I think, are nine and a half. Some number 12 blades are running at eight teeth per inch. So there is a variance there, but that one tooth per inch or that one and a half teeth per inch is not gonna make a difference in your scrolling project. So don't get too hung up on, oh my goodness, Kenny says that this one's a nine and a half teeth per inch, but this number 12 here says it's an eight. Now what do I do? It's not going to affect your project, not one bit. What will affect your project is if you are, say, using a two-op blade, which would be, I think, in the 22 or 23 teeth per inch, and you try to use it to do the same job that an aggressive number 12 blade would be doing at your eight to nine and a half teeth per inch, that blade is just gonna heat up and snap. So be aware that the numbers on them mean something and it means um, the amount of teeth per inch. General rule of thumb, the smaller the universal number, so a number two blade, 
the thinner the stock they cut. The larger the number, say a number 12, the thicker the stock they cut. Simple as that. With the teeth, it goes reversed. So if it has a smaller number of teeth, so a smaller TPI, it cuts a thicker stock. If it has a higher TPI, it cuts a thinner stock. Little confusing, but once you get the hang of it, you will actually uh, look at it and say, okay, I need this size blade. But the, the whole uh, point is to learn uh, the TPI and the universal numbers so that you know what blade to apply to your project. All right, so now you're getting some knowledge in your noodle. You're realizing how the teeth relate to the size and how to choose the uh, or know the difference between a blade that will cut a thin stock and a thick stock by choosing TPI. Um, you also know what type of blade cuts what type of uh, a cut. In other words, the skip tooth only on the down stroke, reverse tooth and crown tooth on the down and the up, preventing the burring. You know the spiral, you don't have to spin your stock, you just move it around. So you have a plethora of information there um, in order to choose the type of blade that you want and you're on the way to learning what size to choose. So now, in the interest of giving more information about the sizes of the blade, I want to head over to the bench and we're going to go through some of the general sizes of blades with their TPI and their universal numbers and I'm going to give you a little breakdown of the sizes of stock that they will cut. Um, that way, if you want to take notes, you can so that you have your little cheater list and you'll know uh, that I'm cutting this size stock. Look at that, I need this size blade. Um, so let's head over to the bench. Well, we're gonna start off with the baby of the bunch. And there it is right there. I mean, it is so fine that you can barely see the teeth on it against the stock there. And this would be the two-aught blade. Um, it's uh, shown on packaging as a two and then a slash and a zero. Now, these are some fine, fine blades and they actually run at about 28 TPI and they are for your extremely thin material. Things like a sixteenth of an inch thick, uh, an eighth of an inch thick. You can cut for softer woods, a quarter of an inch thick with this as well. But I would say from personal experience, and there are those that may differ or that may disagree with me, but uh, my personal experience is I would not attempt to cut any thicker than a quarter of an inch with this particular 2 aught blade. Um, all the blades I will be showing you here in this particular segment are all reverse tooth and they are all made by Olsen uh, scroll saw blades. So this particular one for any fine, fine fretwork in thin stock uh, up to and including quarter of an inch, uh, I would use this particular blade which is a 2 aught. The next blade I want to show you is its bigger brother or sister depending on how you see these blades. I'll try to straighten that up there. This is a universal number two. And a uh, universal number two will run at about 20 teeth per inch on this reverse tooth blade. And you can see it is a little beefier than the two aught, but it is not a lot beefier. It's not a huge blade. And once again, it is for your finer cuts. It is for your finer fretwork in thinner stock. So for this, depending on the type of stock that you're using, um, I would go right up to 3 eighths of an inch thick with this number two. 
but once you start getting into the harder maples of course you would have to go to a higher number blade so at uh, just to show you to prove the theory 28 teeth per inch so the higher TPI cuts the thinner material this one here has a um, lower TPI and it cuts a thicker material so the thinner a little thicker and then as we go along you'll see the thicker uh, material blades as well so this particular one here um, I would cut again it's capable of cutting the thin thin stocks that this two odd is but you can go a little higher with this one uh, up to three eighths depending on the thickness of your stock so from say one eighth and less up to three eighths uh, a number two blade will be your blade of choice. Now after the number two blade, we have here a number three blade. Again, not much difference in the physical size between a number two and a number three, but what is different is the TPI. With the number two blade, of course, you're running at about 20 TPI, and with this number three, three blade in this particular case you're actually at 15 TPI so the aggressive uh, ability to cut a thicker stock between the number three and the number two is actually quite significant where if you were cutting with a number two blade and you were in that range of getting up to its uh, threshold of three-eighths of an inch thick and you found it having uh, a little bit of problem your your cuts aren't going well you find that you're pushing harder on the blade deflecting your blade because you're giving extra pressure then step it up to a number three and you'll find that the blade will cut it with ease so that's a good way to judge your blade if you um, you know have the ability to have more than one blade if you're using this number two and it's just cutting it like crazy and you have no control because it's cutting so fast step it down to a two aught if you're using the number two and you're finding to, that you have to put so much pressure on or uh, just force a habit you're pushing it harder and harder and deflecting the blade and your cuts aren't going so well because it's so slow step it up to a number three and chances are that would be the blade that you would want. So sometimes it's not about the numbers, sometimes it's just about um, the experience with using the saw because of course uh, you could have two pieces of maple and one would cut easier and the other one would be difficult to cut depending on the denseness of the grain of that piece of board, etc. So again, a number three blade at 15 roughly, TPI, uh, I would cut with a number three blade right up to and including half inch, even possibly five eighths depending on the stock. But a number three should do you just fine up to about half inch. And of course with all these blades they can all cut the thinnest stock. So, uh, I'm not going to give you a range from this point on because obviously uh, they can all cut the thin stuff. I'll just sort of be telling you its maximum threshold of where you may want to consider stepping it up to the next blade. So a number three, half inch, possibly five eighths depending on the species. Well I just checked and I don't have any number fives and I thought I had a couple to show you. But the reason that I don't have a number five is basically because I find them to be extremely similar um, to a number seven blade and therefore um, I don't find them to be very useful for me. Um, only because where I can take that number three blade right up to a five eighths, um, I find that this number seven blade will take pretty much um, from here on in it will take the larger stock so anything above five eighths up to say three quarters and seven eighths thick 
Um, using PGT blades or the mock cutting in a number seven, I'm even able to comfortably cut like one inch thick material. So this is a number seven blade here, and this one runs at 11 and a half teeth per inch, whereas the number five would run with a 12 and a half. It's an extra tooth per inch, and as I said earlier in the show, um, that one tooth per inch isn't going to make that big of a difference, and therefore I don't really bother with a number five blade. But with this number seven, um, as I said, it will cut up to, um, and I have had good luck with, up to one inch and uh, an inch and an eighth, but that is with the PGT, uh, the, the precision ground, and uh, with the mock cutting. With this particular reverse tooth, I wouldn't go much higher than three quarters of an inch with this particular blade. So at a number three here, up to five eighths, if this one starts to struggle, step it up to a number seven and you should be just fine. Another blade that I really don't use much, but I do have some, is a number nine blade. And for the same reason that I don't use um, a number five blade, because it is so similar to the number three here, I also don't use a number nine very often because of its similarity uh, in abilities to the number seven bit. In this particular case, if I was cutting some three quarters stock with this number seven bit and it was struggling just a little, I might step it up to a number nine. It would really be my uh, only use for a number nine in this case. And it's only if the seven was struggling, but the seven would be the go-to. Um, the seven runs at, like I said, 11 and a half to 12 teeth per inch. Um, well, so does the number nine. Um, the number nine runs at pretty much the same uh, stats as far as the teeth per inch goes. Um, the difference between the two is that the number nine has a little beefy, uh, a, a little more beefy body. So it could take a little more abuse than a number seven. But as far as cutting ability between the two goes, um, they're pretty much identical. Why would I step it up from a number seven then if they have the same cutting ability? Um, if the seven was struggling, why would I step it up to a nine first? It's that extra material. Uh, the blade won't heat up as much and won't become as fragile and that might be all it takes to cut the size stock that you need is to step it up to a little beefier blade, not necessarily have a more aggressive cutting action. And finally, the last blade here in our arsenal of uh, reverse tooth blades would be the number 12. And uh, it's the largest of the group and it runs at about nine teeth per inch. And this is for cutting the thicker stuff. Um, guys, when you're, you're running stock, say over one inch, inch and an eighth, uh, inch and a half, etc., etc. Uh, I know that some scroll saws and most of them will boast a maximum cutting thickness of two inches. Um, yeah, that's great and everything, but it's pretty rare that I've seen a blade that will take that because they end up curving and deflecting so bad that you don't get a straight cut. So this number 12 doesn't get too much use in the shop. Um, it does have some uses, but this here is if you're cutting with a number 12 and you're having that much problem i would suggest maybe uh you might want to cut it on a bandsaw not a scroll saw uh, with a finer tooth blade with that sort of a setup in my shop this blade number 12 this blade number nine rarely get used and these four here are the ones that get the most use from the two aught, the number two, the number three, and of course the number seven. These four here are the ones that get the most use in the arsenal. Um, these ones here are specialty blades that I don't use very often. But you can see 
Um, just the way they're laid out on the board, the difference in girth from the smallest, smallest blade here up to this number 12. So while we have them laid out like this, why don't we bring in what I was referring to or what I spoke on earlier with the pinned blade. Now look at the size of that pin blade there. Now this is for a different scroll saw than normal. It's not your typical uh, five inch, but <clears throat> what it is, is it's just to show you the girth of this blade in order to get the pins into it to have it work. And it is absolutely crazy. You're not doing any tight cornering with a pin blade like that. So if at all possible, um, try to avoid them if you want to do the fine fretwork. So there we have um, our reverse tooth blades and hopefully a little overview for you on how to choose them for your different jobs. Now in this mix here of reverse tooth blades, I want to throw in one of the PGT blades and I'm going to put it right here. And the reason for that is because this blade, being the PGT, and the one directly beside it are both the exact same size. They are both number sevens, and the difference is, is that the PGT, this happens to be a double reverse tooth on the PGT, which means that the, uh, while they're both reverse tooth blades, this number seven here has just single teeth in the row. This one has groups of two uh, teeth tight together with a gap in between for clearing the uh, sawdust, kind of like an extra gullet to clear it. And it's a much more aggressive cut and therefore can take a little thicker material than a regular reverse tooth. It also gives that nice clean edge that I was telling you about. But yet, it has uh, also a little less teeth per inch uh, being one, actually. And where I said that doesn't make a difference, um, it really doesn't. But what makes the difference here is the tooth layout with this being the double tooth and this just being single teeth. So just another thing to be aware of there that the same blade um, can produce two different results and uh, with this one here as I said seven eighths of an inch but with this one you know at the most kind of thing and this one here I would pump it up even higher I would push this PGT even further if need be but in most cases um, if you're pushing the blade to its extreme you're going to overheat it and break it anyway so let's see if I can just pan off this here and show you the difference in the two uh, teeth. And there you go, that's what they look like side by side. You can see a big difference in the teeth and you can imagine the big difference in their cutting action as well. Also, while we have all these laid out, I'm just gonna put a spiral blade in here so that you can see the difference in the profile of that. Um, that is quite a thick blade. This is actually a number five. And um, I'll show you a close-up of the teeth of it. And you can see here that it does have teeth on all sides. Um, this is actually a spiral end. Uh, this is not a flat end. But um, just be aware that this one is out there. And again, this would be for your very fine fretwork pieces. Um, I'll show you an example here of one that I've cut and uh, you can see there this is extremely fine work and when you're dealing with fine work like this you don't want to be spinning your piece uh, with your blade uh, running because of course it's going to snap your smaller more delicate areas so um, the spiral blade will go a long way to helping you um, not break your piece and uh, avoid snapping pieces by aggressive spinning of the stock. So the one thing I would like to demonstrate here before I bring this particular show to a close 
is I would like to demonstrate for you guys the spiral blade so that you understand a little more how it works um, without the need to rotate your stock. And I've drawn out a little silly pattern here. It means nothing. It's just a demonstration of the blade. But you can see here that by bringing this blade in, I don't need to rotate anything. The blade cuts on all sides. All I have to do is gently maneuver my stock in any direction I please, and it will cut. You may want to note too that there's next to no deflection of the blade. I'm not bending that blade to get it to do this. In fact, I'm almost using my hands um, like a CNC machine where I'm pivoting or moving the stock on its X and its Y axis and letting the blade do the cutting on all sides. It's just gentle, gentle movements. And as I said earlier, uh, I really find that this doesn't give clean cuts as far as that clean, crisp line. But you can see there where it will cut whatever shape you desire without rotating the stock. Um, you might also want to note the amount of burring that's on the back end here. I don't know how well that's showing on camera, but I'll take a picture and pan away right here. There you are. And you can see the amount of burring that is on this from a spiral blade. Um, that is because spiral blades do not come in a reverse tooth and they do not have the ability to take that away. So there is extra sanding involved with a spiral. So there you go, there is the demonstration of the spiral blade. I hope that's made um, this blade's function just a little more clear to you. And there you have it. An overview of scroll saw blades and their sizes and what stock uh, size to use for each blade or what blade to use for each stock size. Um, guys, I don't want you to take this video as a definitive list. The thing with scrolling is that it's suggestive almost in that different blade sizes work for different material, but there's so many variables in the material that what one day worked with a quarter inch, maybe a, a two, number two blade worked with quarter inch, the next day you might need a number three because that same quarter inch thick stock might be a little more dense. There's so many variables with the material. So this particular show is only meant to give you guys a bit of a guideline for you to be able to use to start your blade selection process. If I'm happy with a number two, that might be my technique. You guys might want to bump it up to a number three because you find that a little easier for you and there's nothing wrong with that. That is the flexibility of scroll sawing. Um, and that is what you want to do. That is what, uh, what ability you want to uh, be able to possess, is the fact that you want to be able to look at a piece of stock and say, I'm going to use a number three on that. And within the first minute or two of scrolling, you will be able to tell right away uh, in that instant whether or not that blade selection was right for you but you need a starting point to be able to um, acquire that skill of choosing the blade and that is what this video is about having the basic information to say these blades cut this size stock and then using your experience to tweak those blades as you go and choose the blade that works best for your style of scrolling and for your style of cutting on the saw so guys I want to thank you for joining me this week again, and I hope you found this video informative. I hope you would enjoyed it. Uh, not as much work on this show as what there is on a normal show of mine, but sometimes you got to pull back on the work to give the information so that you can get into doing the work. So guys, thanks again for joining me this week, and I'm going to see you again next week with yet another 
Woodworking Video.